identify the correct interpretation of the following figure. Here we have a graph. It is the relation between the reciprocal of substrate concentration with the reciprocal of the velocity. And we can see two slopes are given. The one in blue indicates the enzyme activity in the absence of inhibitor, whereas the one in red indicates the enzyme activity in the presence of inhibitor. Based on this, we should choose the right option. The option says either it denotes uncompetitive inhibition or reduced Km or reduced Pmax or all of the above. We should know that this comparative slope given in this graph denotes a type of enzyme inhibition. And the two important parameters that are affected in different types of enzyme inhibition are the Km and the Bmax. So based on this, the curve will be determined. If you see, there are two different ways in expressing this Km and Bmax. One is a normal Michaelis Menten curve. Here you can see that it is a graph between the substrate concentration with a reaction velocity. And if you plot it, it results in a hyperbola shaped curve. And since it is a curve and not a straight line, it is difficult to obtain the exact Vmax and the Km value from this graph. To overcome this came the invention of line weaver Burke plot and it is a graph which is plotted against the reciprocal of substrate concentration with the reciprocal of the reaction velocity and you can see the y intercept is 1 by Vmax and the x intercept is minus 1 by Km. And the graph given in our question is based on this line weaver Burke plot. So therefore line weaver Burke plot gives an accurate value of Km and Vmax in case of different types of enzyme inhibition. Now getting on with competitive inhibition, we all know that the inhibitor is going to be a structural analog of the substrate and therefore they both compete with one another to bind with the active site of the enzyme. So in competitive inhibition, what happens to the Km and Vmax? Km, that is the binding affinity, will increase because the affinity of the substrate to the enzyme is decreased in presence of inhibitor. Therefore, Km being inversely proportional to the binding affinity, so the decreased affinity is mentioned as increased Km, whereas Vmax remains unchanged. It is because once the enzyme binds with the substrate, the reaction is going to proceed in with normal velocity. Therefore, the Vmax is going to be the same. And if we plot it in the form of a normal Michaelis Menten curve, we get two curves showing the same Vmax, that is the same maximum velocity, but with a different Km. Because the one with the presence of inhibitor show an increase in Km, which denotes the decrease affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate. And plotting it in a line weaver Burke plot, you can see that the Km is changed. That is, the x intercept shows an increase, whereas the y intercept, the 1 by v max, remains the same. Therefore, both the slopes will intersect at the same y axis, whereas at different x axis. This is the slope you have to remember for competitive inhibition. And if you look into non-competitive inhibition, you can see that the inhibitor binds at a site different from the substrate binding site on the enzyme. So what happens to the Km and Vmax here? So binding of the substrate to the enzyme is unaffected. Therefore, the Km remains the same. Whereas the velocity, it gets reduced. It is because once the inhibitor binds with a site on the enzyme, that is apart from the substrate binding site on the enzyme, it brings about some conformational change within the enzyme. Therefore, it reduces the catalytic activity. Therefore, the velocity of the reaction is reduced. And if you plot it in a normal Michaelis Menten curve, you get two curves which is showing difference in the Vmax but showing similarity in the Km because the affinity of the enzyme to the substrate is unaffected in case of non-competitive inhibition, whereas the Vmax is decreased. And plotting it on a line weaver Burke plot, you can see that the Km remains same, that is the x-intercept remains the same, whereas there occurs a change in the y-intercept, which shows the reduced Vmax in this graph. Okay, Therefore, you can see that the two slopes meet commonly on the x-axis, whereas it differs on two different points on y-axis. Therefore, this is the graphical representation of non-competitive inhibition. 
these are the two main types of inhibition whereas when looking into the graph given in the question you can see that there is a change in the x-intercept and there is a change even in the y-intercept so here you can see that the km is also decreased it is from this point to this point that is changed whereas the vmax is also showing a decrease in this graph so therefore there is a condition known as uncompetitive inhibition where the inhibitor binds with the enzyme substrate complex that is it has no affinity for free enzyme it only binds with the enzyme substrate complex which leads to formation of enzyme substrate inhibitor and in case of uncompetitive inhibition both the km as well as vmax show a decrease and this graph in the question is also showing a change in both the km and the vmax that is both x intercept and y intercept show a change indicating a decrease in km and decrease in vmax so therefore this graph denotes the uncompetitive inhibition therefore option 1 is right showing a decrease in km option 2 is right and showing a decrease in vmax that is option 3 is also right therefore the correct interpretation is option 4 all of the above points are right and it suits with the graph given in this image